welcome. This is the screenshot updates project meeting for SheCode Africa Contributhon, April 18th, 2022. Great to have you here. Attending, whoops, attending. We have Nafisa and we have Soma and Mark. So first topic for me was, are there any questions that you have? Soma, I think you had asked some questions and maybe we can spend our time trying to be sure we get you answers to those questions. Oh yeah, um, about trying to install Apache Maven. Yes. Yeah, I saw your answer, but I haven't tried it yet. Okay, and so this is on Mac OS, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So, so the, the, there is probably a technique, let's see if we can find it, Mac OS, there may be an even better technique that talks about how to do it. Yeah, either of these are probably, yeah. So if you've already got brew, yeah, uh, then you could just do brew install Maven. Now, I don't know what version that will give you. So that's, that's one, so let's go one alternative would be brew install mm -hmm. Maven, right? However, okay. that one has the, the downside that I'm not a brew user and I'm not a Mac OS user. So there's a risk that, ah, that's really silly. Let's do it. Another alternative, and brew install Maven should just do it automatically for you. And then you would do a Maven minus, oops, MVN minus version. And it should report the, the version number for you. You need, need at least Maven 3.8.3, the last time I checked, and prefer 3.8.4. Okay. Uh, another alternative is download the zip file from Apache, from the Apache download site, from the Maven download site. Let's make it very clear. And, and then unpack it, unzip in a specific location, in a location you prefer. And then add that location to your path in your shell. And that, that's the technique I've used, but you could use whatever technique works well for you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll try it out and let you know. Great, thank you. All right. And Miracle, I see that you're here. That's great, thank you. All right. Are there other questions that you have? No, no, not for now. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Miracle. I'm sorry I'm late. I got, uh, I couldn't keep track of time. I got carried away with what I was doing. Very sorry. No problem. That's it's great that you're here. Thank you. All right. So, how is your progress getting started with Jenkins? I think I've seen questions from both Miracle and from Soma. So, so any concerns there? Okay. Um, for me, all through the weekend, I had uh, I was quite confused with what I was doing. But uh, thank God, today I was able to, you know, get to properly create uh, a pipeline. So I moved on to the next uh, step on the preparation guide. So that's that's where I am now. Very good. Hopefully, okay. I, there's there's no questions yet regarding that one. Okay. All right. Well, so. That's that's really good. Now, looking ahead, looking forward to the 
looking further ahead, we could spend some time looking for screenshots. We could spend time together seeking screenshots that need to be updated. You're not ready to make any changes for those yet, but if we, if we do that together, I think it may give you a hint how to do it when you start looking on your own. Um, that's one thing we could consider doing. Uh, we could um, spend time review, we could review the uh, startup steps in the document. Uh, we could review Jenkins concepts and capabilities, if that helps you. Is there one of those three that you would think is more interesting to you than the others for our time? One today? of those three that Soma, I think we're getting lots of background noise. I'm going to mute you temporarily. We're getting lots of background noise. I'm going to mute you temporarily. Oh, nope. Nope, it was miracles. Oh, nope. Okay. Nope, it was miracles. Okay. Mm, no. Hmm. No. Hello. Soma. Okay. So it's Hello. the, Hi. the echo. Soma. Doesn't seem okay. So it's the no? echo. I'm getting an echo from myself. Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. Ah, now it's not there. All right. I guess we're all right for now. So, what Miracle and Nafisa are muted. Right, and so maybe it was one of their devices that was giving the, the echo. So I think that's okay. When they need to when they need to speak, all they need to do is unmute. Okay. All right. So is there are any of these three things interesting to you? Would you like to try them? While we're while we've got our time together, or is there something else you would prefer we do in the in the moments we've got together now? Well, I think um, we should look for screenshots, you know, so we could move forward. But then also reviewing Jenkins concepts looks like a really good idea too. Okay, good. Let's let's take those two. How about we'll spend? What if we limit ourselves to? not more than 20 minutes looking. And on that one, and then we'll, we'll use the up to 30 minutes or up to, yeah, up to 30 minutes on Jenkins concepts and capabilities. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, good, all right. So in order to search for screenshots that might need updating, the steps I'd take is I'd go to Jenkins.io. Well, actually, I guess there are two ways to approach it. Uh, one way is list the files that contain images in the source code. And that I could just do by going to, okay, I'm gonna make my text bigger. Is that big enough to read, Soma? Yeah, it is. Good, okay, so. So if I do a git grep minus L image colon, it tells me, oh, and then I want, doc slash book. Let's limit ourselves just to the book for oh, content slash doc slash book. <clears throat> okay, so this already tells us a list of how many, maybe 30 or 40, almost 40 30. files that have screenshots in them. And so these files seem like really good candidates so in order to make my life easier, I'm going to convert those things into URLs that we could then open. 
And so let's see if I can do that with a little bit of, okay, so take one sample. We're gonna go right here. And I want to look at blue ocean activities. So if I look at subprojects, subprojects, no, document, oh, documentation. How do I get to the blue ocean page now? Well, let's see. So how about, let's just search for it. Blue ocean. And the file was creating pipelines. Creating a pipeline in blue ocean. Here we go. Oh no, that's a tutorial. Well, hmm. doc, book, blue ocean, documentation here, blue ocean. Ah, it would help if I looked there. Okay, good. So this gives me, and I want to see activity. There we go, this one. Okay, so this is one. So I need to convert one form of text to the other. And sorry, I'm, I'm using some Unix utilities because they're comfortable for me. Okay, that's the one that I want. So content doc book becomes that. Okay, so it's giving me an approximation. Okay. And then is it that we just take off the... Okay. Oh, yes, good. Okay, so one more step. There we go. Okay. Now let's test this just to see if it worked. It did, good, okay. So now what I've got is I've got a list of URLs we should check. Yeah. So I'm gonna paste them right in here. So that I'm adding them to this, this sheet that we've got. And then we'll work through that sheet together. We'll do a few and you can do more. You could use the same technique that I'm using to, to find others, I narrowed mine just to the list of documents or in doc book. Okay, controller isolation. So here's some more. All right. Okay, so we have some URLs that are candidates. Let's go looking at them. So we know, let's look at activity view first. Okay, that I happen to know this one didn't change. I think the two of you have seen that picture already and seen that it hasn't changed in the version you're running. So this one has no change needed. Okay, oops, wrong one. Okay, then creating pipelines. 
And again, I think you've seen this one and no change yeah. needed there either, right? Yes, yes. Good, okay. Although I might recommend uh, uh, one image added, not replaced though. Ah, okay. So if there's a if there's a place where a correction would be useful, be sure you note that. So so which one is it? And I'll take a note of it here in this in the in the page. Um, I'm using my phone. I can't see. Okay, no problem. So one one image may need to be added. Is that okay if I say it that way? Yes. Yes. Great. All right. Sorry, and with, with you on your phone, that means you probably can't see my screen, right? So that makes it difficult, but will you be able to view the recording later to see the technique? Yes, I'll, I'll watch the videos later. Great, okay. And so on dashboard, oh yes. Okay, on dashboard, this one definitely needs updates because I believe anyway that the health icons in the list will need to be updated. I think that those have changed. Okay. okay, so let's look at getting started now. And it definitely needs an update because this screenshot of the plugin, plugin manager is, is showing the old plugin manager. This image that's on the screen right now is for the plugin manager from before, from six months ago even. Okay, so this one definitely needs a plugin manager screenshot. And now the two of you have seen this, this one, I think, because you've used the plugin manager to install Blue Ocean already. Yes. Okay, then index, let's look at it. Oops, index, no such page. Ah, here we go. Okay, ah, this one, no change needed. Yeah. Okay, pipeline editor. So is the process that I'm using reasonably comfortable for you? You see what I'm doing? I'm just looking at each page and making my own guess. Is there a, a, screen a screenshot update needed? Yes, it is. Okay, very good. Now we're going to get to some more interesting ones here pretty quickly. Oh, oh, this one. Huh. Yeah, I think this one is still unchanged, okay. The, the annotated screenshot there. Yes, that one's also unchanged, okay. Okay, now set up wizard for tutorials. Okay, so this one is a separate file that we have to look at in install. And it's for the tutorial. So sorry, this one is a little more complicated. We have to look here and we see a tutorial like this one that has, now we should see a picture of the setup wizard. There it is here. And that needs no change. Yeah, those are all okay, good, okay. Now installing for Windows may need a change because we certainly got a new Windows installer. Oh, nope, it's well, okay, look at the version number on this screen. It's 2.263.4. It would probably be really nice to have something much newer like 2.332.1, something that is less than two years old. So this is a good one to update. Um, Update screenshots with the version info 2.332.1 or newer. Is 
So, and let's close the tabs to the right. Okay, so now, how about change system time zone? Okay, and this one is definitely outdated, or is it? Now I'm gonna to have to look, and you could use the same technique I'm using. If you go to weekly.ci.jenkins.io, and then you'll see on the user, whoops, on the user dropdown configure, and it shows us time zone. Okay, so so there is a, there is a difference here when I select the time zone, for instance, in my case, I'm America slash Denver. Where is that? That's an awful lot. D, D, D. Denver, okay. But so what we see is there is a difference here that is probably worth highlighting. So it's a, a relatively small difference. So I'd call that one low priority to update. Now let's take the next one, managing CLI. And this one definitely needs a, an update because this image that's taken here is for the old way of doing things. So if I went to, if I go here to configure, And you'll see that the UI is different on SSH public keys. The text is different. There's different, different icons. So that one needs an update. And, and then this process just continues. So here we have managing plugins where that's definitely needs changes. And it may even need, need better phrasing. So you may may want to suggest text create corrections, not just picture corrections. Um, if you're only comfortable doing pictures, that's fine too. But they're they're both quite valid. So script okay. approval. Here we go. So this says, and I don't know if I've got permission here to do script approval. I probably don't. Oh, I do. Okay. You won't, but I do. Mm -hmm. So if we check, this one has script approval is where it is, is hmm. now it should be in, is it in the script. No, it's not the script console. Script approval may not be installed here. Just a minute while I try another Jenkins installation. Okay. Sometimes one of the problems you'll encounter is that the Jenkins installation that you're looking at doesn't have a plugin installed that's needed in order to show the, yes, okay, so here it is. This is my installation and it has in-process script approval. Now let's see if how the, so first the opening screenshot is incorrect. It's a very different look. So that one needs, needs an update. of the manage Jenkins screenshot. 
Okay, so we've almost reached the end of the 20 minutes that I wanted to allocate to this task. Any questions about the way I was doing that or, or things that you find perplexing? Um, you, said, you said we wouldn't have permission to assess the script approval. Correct. So, so then how do we like get the screenshots if we can't assess it? Ah, so so I was using weekly.ci.jenkins.io. You will have permission to access oh. it on your own Jenkins installation. Okay. Okay. Does that does that thanks thanks a good question. That's that's let me make a note here. Maybe I should put it here that um let's see. So see the list mark created in the in the um, sheet and then can use that one weekly to see some of them use your own installation to see others to see all of them okay does does that help yeah yes it does it does okay great all right, so then, then what, what you're doing is working through each of these rows, trying to identify, okay, do I need, does this one need a change? So UI themes, I would expect will need a major change. Uh, maybe not actually, that's not, yeah, that's a little out of date. And this one will need that you install a, a plugin you probably don't yet have this Neo two plugin, or some other plugin that shows the theme. So, so this one definitely needs an update. All right, and that's the that's the technique that you'll use as you work through it. This one definitely needs update. So any questions so far on, on that technique? No, no questions from me, I understand. Okay, great. So let's- I, let's I have a question, Mark. Yes. Okay, while we are, we are still running, uh, going through the steps for preparation, um, are we expected to kind of already start this, uh, finding the images? Or, or wait till we are done with the, the whole preparation. You can you can wait until you're done with the whole preparation. You okay. you don't have to start this process. This this thing that I've been showing here is something I assumed you would probably not start until we officially start the project. All right. So so for me it was let's get you through the setup steps first. That way you're okay. you're comf more comfortable with Jenkins and aware of how to navigate it, then you could start doing, doing this, this process. But really, let's get you through the setup steps first. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Um, I'm not like I'm working on the project, actually. Does, I just need to clarify something. The Jenkins um, that, they are setting up on their system. Is it the updated version? Like, does it have the updated view of what they are supposed to compare? Because I was wondering how would they know which one needs um, changing and which one does not? So the Jenkins, they, that's a very good question. So your question was, has is the Jenkins they installed the one they should use as their reference for comparison? Yeah, yes. so let's, so which I'm going to ask it a little differently, which Jenkins version should we use for comparison, right? And, and that's Jenkins 2.343, most recent weekly, actually, and let's call it that, the most recent weekly, and that will change every week. Yeah. And that change right now, it's currently Jenkins 2.343. Uh, tomorrow, 
It will be Jenkins 2.344. Uh, one week from tomorrow, it will be Jenkins 2.345. That will be a great number. So, um, so, ma, so I'm, 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 so ma, sorry, I'm, I'm guessing you understand how the um, updating will go. Like by next week, you know how to upgrade to two point three four five and things like that. That's well. So this this one that we maintain weekly. Ci. Jenkins. Ida was upgraded every time, every week. Yeah. But your version that you're running locally. Oh, okay, okay. Download, install, and install each week to get yeah. the most recent. Okay. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why this install process, this initial setup, is is actually quite important because you're going to do it multiple times. It's this is not a one-time thing that you'll oh I'm going to download it, install it, and I'm done. It's Every week when we release a new version, you're going to need to go get that new version. Okay. Good question. Very good. Any other questions? Okay. So then... How about let's spend some time now on Jenkins concepts and capabilities and, and we'll do some question and answer there about what are, what are key concepts and how do we learn more about those key concepts. So first, first key concept is the notion of what is Jenkins. All right, so let's, let's look at what is it already at the top level. It is an automation server. Its job is to automate things. It automates all sorts of things. And it does that by using plugins that can be optionally installed to solve different needs. So for instance, if I need to do something with a Windows installer, I might choose tools that will let me, a plugin that will let me do more work with a Windows installer. If I need to do work with a JUnit test system, I may use the JUnit plugin. Those are the kinds of things where, so plugins are very important to Jenkins in its role as an automation server. Now, big concepts involved in Jenkins, Jenkins has a few job types where a job is does work for people and the the primary job type right now is the pipeline job type and what pipeline job type is is it tells it lets me in my source code define what steps Jenkins should execute so I can specify with this source code I want first to check out the code then I want to compile it. Then I want to run its tests. If the tests pass, I want to deploy it. All those steps can be described in a pipeline. And those pipeline steps can be sophisticated or relatively simple. They're all part of, part of the bigger picture of here's, here's a nice sample. Let's take this example. It says we're going to do a build first then we're gonna do a test, then we're gonna do a deploy. And we put our steps into each of those things. Any questions so far? I think you've already seen most of this in your experience so far with Jenkins because you, you've both defined pipelines, right? Um, well, I'm just getting started on that okay. step, defining pipeline. Okay, good. Well, so then you'll, you'll see this. So pipeline is the most important concept for you. So that's where you should, you should be thinking and spending time. However, Jenkins provides other job types like a freestyle job type. 
And let's see if I can just show you what that would look like on, on let's look on my Jenkins server that I have at, at my house. And I've got freestyle job types that do all sorts of things. Like I have a freestyle, well, I have a freestyle job type that does things like installs Windows tools for me. Oh no, I think this one actually is pipeline. I've converted many of them to pipeline, but I've got freestyle jobs that will do things like, like these various cleanup things or checkers or all sorts of little things like that. What they do is they do, they perform some operation for me and tell me if that thing is well behaved. And it's that simple. They're just a little job that I configure here. And I tell it how to run. I tell it what to run. Here it's running a little, a little shell script. That's a freestyle job. So pipeline and freestyle are the two major job types. Your focus will probably be mostly on pipeline, but be aware that there is such a thing as freestyle. Any questions so far? No, no questions, no. Okay, great. All right, so then because pipeline is so fundamental to what happens here, there is this user interface, Blue Ocean, that gives us an easy way to see what's going on in the pipeline. And the Blue Ocean UI lets us visualize pipelines. So for example, it lets me see that this is how the Git plugin, one example of how it's built and its most recent build looks like, oh, something went wrong here. Let's look at this. So Blue Ocean here lets me visualize what happened in this build. And you see here that I did a checkout, I did a build, and then it archived the, the result. And I did that on Linux, and I did that on Windows. And Blue Ocean lets me see, okay, what were the tests that ran? Okay, were there any changes from the previous build? Did it generate any outputs that might be useful for me later? Some artifacts, all those things that are just part of, part of the pipeline and come to me from Blue Ocean, or I can actually see the same things here in the in the classic user interface. So I get I can see test results. I can actually see various compiler warnings. I can see I can see coverage reports. So for instance, if we if we took a look at one of my other plugins that I have to be maintaining, it has coverage reporting in it, this one right here that lets me see, hey, how is the code coverage doing on this thing? And these kinds of things help me understand how well or poorly the test automation is configured for this, for this particular piece of Java code that I'm building. So these kind of concepts are just a natural part of what Jenkins does. It wants to build your, build your code the way you ask you to build it, and then it'll show you the results and it shows the results in various interesting ways. So this particular coverage report is one way. There are other ways like this one, where if we look at ci.jenkins.io, it has a coverage report that is really quite an elegant reporting system showing how well or poorly this particular piece of code is being covered. And it'll let me look at individual files. It's, it's a very nice thing to see as I try to understand how well tested I am. All part of Jenkins and its plugins. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Uh, for me. For me, the um, um, but I guess I'll get to understand them better as we go through the project. 
So but were I there? Don't, I don't. I don't exactly have any particular question. Okay. No problem. No yes. problem at all. So other other facilities that are uh, are available in addition to the concept of pipeline jobs. So pipeline jobs define the uh, the job with code, right? They use the developer says what they how they want the pipeline to run. Whereas freestyle jobs define the jobs by clicking on the user interface. Now pipeline jobs have an even better way of doing things that's available called a multi-branch pipeline job. And in this case, jobs are created and deleted automatically as pull requests are proposed and merged. So let's look at an example here. Let's look at the let's look at the git client plugin as one example. So it has a number of pull requests that have been proposed. And as we look at those pull requests in GitHub, I can see these pull requests. Here's a pull request from Rushikesh who's suggesting, hey, I'd like to make these additions to improve the automated testing. And we can see what happens here with those changes by looking at the Jenkins output. And it will take me right back to ci.jenkins.io where here is the build from Rushikesh's changes. Now this job, was created automatically when he submitted the pull request. And when I merge the pull request, this will be deleted automatically. And I didn't have to do anything to either create it or delete it. So a new pull request arrives, a new job gets created. It builds that pull request. If the pull request is closed, the job gets deleted. If the pull request is merged, the job gets deleted. In either case, when the work is done, the job is automatically destroyed, deleted, and, and I didn't have to do anything about it. So I just submitted changes this morning to some other places and their pull requests immediately came into, into this ci.jenkins.io and created new jobs for me that I could use. This is from that concept of a multi-branch pipeline job. Now you can read more about that. And certainly as you're going through doing screenshot updates, you're going to see this page eventually anyway, these kind of pages. So if we look at pipeline multi-branch, come on. Oh no, we want to see this one. That's just the details of that specific page or that specific keyword, we want a better version. Multi-branch, come on. Creating a multi-branch pipeline. Here we go. And so, and this is one actually that will need a screenshot update. So we're in a good place. These, the pictures you see here are out of date, but this describes how you would do a multi-branch pipeline. That lets, lets your Jenkins automatically create and delete branches for you rather than you having to worry about them. Any questions there? No. Okay. All right. Now there are certainly plenty of other concepts. For instance, Jenkins uses the concept of an agent. 
to, to do its work. So the agent is, is a worker that runs on another computer typically, or may run on your own computer in a different user account. It's intentionally separated from the Jenkins controller. The agent is what allows me to run builds on a system 390 mainframe, a 64-bit ARM Raspberry Pi, a Windows computer and a Linux computer because I have agents on each of those. And you'll read about agents in this page. They do the work. And, and are commonly configured. They could be automatically started and stopped by either things like a, an AWS cloud instance or Azure or Google cloud platform or Oracle cloud or several other cloud providers that provide ways that you can start and stop agents on demand. Or you can have agents that stick around for a long time and do their work for you. I think I've about reached the point where I'd call for a pause. Any other questions before we conclude for today? Well, from my oh. side, not really. Sorry, Soma, go ahead. Um, I said from my side, not really. I don't really understand everything, but I want to get started with pipelines first. So maybe I'll have questions as I go. Great. And, and that sounds reasonable. Miracle, how about you? Yeah, it's the same for me. Like I was saying earlier, the, the concepts are still vague, but I guess we'll get better as we go. Great. Yes, certainly, certainly your having time to get started is very important and, and we'll go ahead with that. So now do we want to meet again this week or would you like to, so would we like one more session this week or would we like to just plan to only meet next week, same day? I think we could do one more session this week. I think it, it might really do us some good. Okay. So how about, what if we said, let me bring up my work calendar just a minute. Would Thursday at this, oh no, would Wednesday at this time work for you? Or would Friday at this time work for you? Either of those two would work for me. I'm thinking Friday. Where what do you think? Um, yeah, Friday is okay. Okay. Okay, so I will schedule a session for us on Friday. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to edit this, this calendar entry and change it so that we'll meet twice a week. See if I can figure out how to, oh, whoops, I'm in the wrong, sorry. I'm going to edit the calendar entry from the place where I have permission to edit the calendar entry. And we're going to change it. So not just on, on weekly on Monday, but let's plan to meet, meet, meet weekly on Monday and on Friday. Now, if I did this right, it will magically update it on your calendar. Yes, exactly. All right, so adding a Friday meeting. All right. And so you should see on your calendar for Friday the 22nd at the same time. I see it on mine. Great. Yes. Any other topics just, before we? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I just did. I saw. I saw the notification. Yes, I just saw it in mine. Excellent. All right. So we will. We will. We can certainly talk by Slack anytime between now and then, but we will meet on Friday as well. 
that's great. Thanks, everybody. Okay. I'll post the re I'll post a link to the recording. It should be available within the next 24 hours. All right. Okay. That would be nice. Okay. Thanks Thank very, very much. much. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye.